Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Gather around the fire, young people, because I'm going to tell you a story of 25 years ago when the most important thing in the synthesizer was that it had a lot of polyphony and multi-timbrality and it sounded as close to a real instrument as possible. <laughs> and at that time, there was a company in the Far East which released a synthesizer that spotted instruments so realistic you could hardly distinguish them from the real thing. And this is the story of We Help. Here we go. So, VL, or Digital Waveguide Synthesis, dates back to the early 70s, uh, when the first mathematical principles were laid down. And, however, due to the lack of computational power, the first real-world application surfaced uh, one decade later in the early 80s. And with digital signal processors arriving on the scene in the early 90s, the technology was ready for the consumer market. As Yamaha licensed that technology early on, they were the first to introduce uh, actual synthesizers running the tech in form of the monophonic VO1 and the 16 voice polyphonic VP1, um, the latter being a prototype that only 16 machines were made of and exist in the whole world. So, how does it work? I won't go into the mathematical details here, but uh, basically um, this is an extension of coupled strong synthesis. The idea is you have an exciter, which is a short burst of sound, and this burst of sound then is fed to a recursive delay effect, which then feeds back into itself and applies a filter on the sound. If you happen to have a good digital delay effect around, you can try this yourself. I'll show you on the Novation Peak. And yeah, I'll create a short burst of sound, and now I'll add a very fast delay to it, and um, the delay time is so low that the frequency of the repetition moves into the audible range. And this will create interesting overtones and add to the sound of uh, the exciter. Yeah, And by using the filter and changing the oscillator shape and adding noise, you can now start shaping the sound. Of course, one of the synthesizers capable of doing VL synthesis is the Yamaha EX5, which I have here. And now we're going to take a look at the possibilities. Okay, I've shown this process a lot of times on this channel, so I won't go into all the details here. Press the edit button on the new sound, and on the comments page, choose the VL engine. And on the oscillators page, you can now select from 255 VL models, including read, word sound effects, bass, standard synth sounds, world instruments, guitars, and more. And for this video, I'm going to use this model named Softblow, and I'll set it up to use with my woodwind controller. Now, we can adjust this model to our needs. I'll quickly move past the pitch and the pitch envelope settings. On the filter page, we can access a multiband equalizer and a low pass filter with resonance. And we'll also skip the amplitude envelope stuff on the LFO page, as LFO is more of a vibrato setting here. The meat of this engine can be found on the control page on the settings tab. Let's take a closer look. Now on this page, you can set up how the instrument model will react to your MIDI controller. As we are using a reed instrument here, let's set up the loudness control first. 
The instrument should be louder the higher the air pressure is. So in the left column, turn this control on, then on the bottom left select 126 for the VL volume control, and then set the depth to the maximum, 63. Now head back to the Amp tab and set the VL oscillator's volume to zero. And now the instrument will reach the highest loudness with the highest air pressure. Let's listen. Our reed instrument still sounds a bit static and artificial. Let's add some more life to it by mapping the VL pressure to the breath controller's air pressure. Another parameter that can modulate our sound is called embouchure, which refers to the way you hold your instrument in your mouth. The next parameter I'll use here is called scream. It refers to the way your instrument reacts to overblowing. This will add overtones to the sound or even transpose it by an octave, depending on the model used. Next is growl, a technique adding vibration to your tone using your tongue. So, after some final tweaks, here's my finished reed instrument. Okay, so the reed instrument is in the bag. Now I'll create a guitar. And um, the problem with that is that uh, the VL engine of the EX5 is monophonic. So I'm using my Akai MPC-1 to multi-sample that um, virtual guitar and then uh, use an actual guitar controller to record my polyphonic guitar track. Here we go. Okay, second patch. I'll just speed through this as I'm basically doing the same things again with guitar model number 77. I'll start by adjusting the equalizer to give the sound more bottom. Then going straight to volume control, pressure and embouchure. The letter determines why you put the finger onto the string on this model. Okay, this is the MPC-1 now, that's my tie sample of the EX-5. The so first set is up to be a MIDI channel. MIDI port should be the MPC, and now you should be able to play um, the EX-5 using the pads like this. All right, now <clears throat> go to menu, then to sampler. Now press this icon up here, and now you can start the multi-sampling. So we're sampling on uh, MIDI track one and we're recording uh, to input one here. And the note range should be, um, I think, E1 to E5. So that's uh, what a normal guitar would do, four octaves. And um, yeah, let's use a note stride of six, should be okay. And um, let's also use four velocity layers for maximal expression, uh, maximal expressiveness. And yeah, then uh, the note length, uh, let's choose uh, four point four and a half seconds and the tail of 500 milliseconds and um, yeah let's turn off looping <coughs> and now how to trim start and turn it into a key group program once it's finished and now it's telling me it's going to last 160 seconds to create this multi-sample now let's do this. So now you can hear the machine iterating through all the notes. And yeah, we can return once this is finished. 
Okay, so this is the finished track. I'm playing the guitar and I'm playing uh, the reed instrument and some bass on the keyboard and I'm recording this as a three stereo track project on my Zoom R24. And yeah, um, a quick reminder, if you found this useful and interesting, please remember to support me by subscribing to my channel and leaving a thumbs up. Here we go. Yeah, and that's it for today. I hope you found this interesting and useful, and if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel or give this video a thumbs up or both, uh, because this is YouTube, right? And also, if you're interested, you can download um, today's sound set and many other sound sets I created on gumroad.com, which should be linked here. And as always, thanks for watching, and see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.